We are now exactly one week since Hudson O'Neill announced his departure from the Rocket House car, and we'll talk today about his options and what still looks like a murky future. Plus, Tanner Holmes is set for his first sprint car start of 2024. What to watch this weekend and more. Let's go. It's Thursday, March 21st. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily presented by Kubota Genuine Parts. If you've been following along, episode 8 of the 410 Sprint Car Build Series with Zach Hampton is live today on the YouTube channel. It's engine time as Zach shows us how to drop in a fresh piece from Speedway Engine Development. Just a handful of episodes remain in this series, which I hope you guys are enjoying. New videos in the series debut each Thursday and Sunday. Uh, as I put together the show today, we are now just a little more than 48 hours away from the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series season getting rolling again. And I say 48 hours and not 24 because just a little bit ago here, Lucas altered the weekend schedule with Atomic moving to Sunday because of possible Friday rain showers. They also moved up the start time Saturday at Brownstown to one hour earlier. So Lucas weekend is now Saturday, Sunday instead of Friday, Saturday. You can see more details on that over at lucasdirt.com. The one big question mark we still don't have answered is what the future holds for Hudson O'Neill in the wake of his departure from the Rocket House car. He's got a ride for this weekend, but beyond that, nothing is set and the rumor mill is both working hard, but also not providing much in the way of solid information. Uh, I've heard everything from certain big teams rolling out a second car to smaller regional teams offering up their rides for O'Neill. And I think it's you know clear and, and, and important to point out again here that he left the Rocket House car without his next deal lined up. And in asking around a bit, O'Neill himself has been really quiet about what the future may bring. People have been asking, and he hasn't really been responding. He doesn't seem interested in talking with any media types, and it's hard to really blame him for that. As many super late model teams as there are out there, not many can just suddenly take their team on the road with a series like Lucas and compete, even with a driver like O'Neill in the seat. And a lot of the top level organizations are upset at the driver spot, at least for right now. It's pretty early in the season. The good thing is, though, is that O'Neill has some time here. After this weekend, Lucas doesn't race again for over a month, with Georgetown, Hagerstown, and Port Royal next, and that happens April 26th through the 28th. So plenty of time to judge all of the available options and make a good decision. And what's wild to me at this particular moment, especially in this current culture of TikTok and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, is that Hudson O'Neill tested yesterday with the team he's going to run for this weekend, and I've not seen a single photo or video from that test show up anywhere online. And there were other teams at the track testing as well. Hat tip to those folks who were there who could have plastered all over social media, but chose not to. As for what the future will bring, your guess at the moment is as good as mine. I've seen the speculation about Masters built and PCC and a second SSI car, and people have shared with me the rumors about a few different Southeastern-based teams. Even the Hunt the Front guys talked about offering up their backup car to O'Neill for this past weekend at Talladega. It's a good thing they didn't because they ended up needing it, but uh, they did it any or they thought about it anyway. And from what I understand, I don't think anybody really knows for sure what his next deal will be. Whatever happens, I hope it's a good situation for him that he can continue competing at a high level. He's definitely one of the top talents in the country. And while his next deal will likely not be to the caliber of the Rocket House car, he definitely deserves a good seat. And one more note here, we probably won't get any sort of official confirmation on his deal for Saturday and Sunday this week until the team rolls the car out of the trailer. So don't expect any sort of press release. Uh, before we move on, if you happen to own some uh, uh, Kubota equipment, make sure to check out the My Kubota app. You can scan the QR code on the screen, and if you look at the screen, the QR code is right there. You can scan that with your phone, and it'll take you right to the App Store to get it. You can also click the links below in the video description to the uh, Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Uh, looking elsewhere this weekend, the Word of Outlaws Sprint Cars are still in Texas, and they have two more races planned there. Friday, they'll be at Big O Speedway in Ennis, Texas, and Saturday, they'll head to Kennedale Speedway Park. Remember that Kennedale date was previously supposed to be at Lawton Speedway in Oklahoma, but that event was moved after Lawton suffered fire damage. Gio Selzy enters the weekend as the championship leader over David Gravel and Donnie Schatz, and we have yet to have a repeat winner this season with the Outlaws through seven events. Selzy and Schatz are the only two drivers right now to finish top 10 in every race. This will be the first official weekend for New World of Outlaws race director Doug Leonard. If you want to know more about him, jump back and check out the Monday Daily Show where we talked about his new deal and his story. He's a seasoned race director, and I doubt you'll even notice something has changed there. 
Also, a first this weekend as well will be Tanner Holmes' first sprint car appearance of 2024. I know a bunch of you also follow along with his YouTube channel, and I'm obviously a big fan of what he does. After running uh, much of the second half of the Outlaw season last year in the Shark Racing 1T, taking over for Jacob Allen, Holmes has returned this year to his family's car and will uh, run a sizable 60-plus race schedule. He'll run the next three weekends with the Outlaws before shifting to some high-limit stuff in April. Uh, and as long as the weather plays nice, I think you could overall see nice sprint car fields both nights. Besides the full-time Outlaws and Holmes, I've seen names like Brenham Crouch and Chase Randall, Aaron Reitzel, Sam Haferteep. All of those guys have plans to race with the Outlaws this weekend. If you want some other sprint car action this week, you should have plenty of other options. William Gr uh, Williams Grove has their first Friday of the season. Obviously, they ran last week, but that was on Sunday. Uh, they've got 410 sprint cars. That show also includes the ULMS late models. Michael Norris won the ULMS opener last week at Pittsburgh. Uh, Lincoln and Port Royal are also both on the schedule for Saturday. Port Royal race, uh, race last week, but that was the Short Track Super Series Modifieds. Uh, this will be their first 410 event of the season. And BAPS will close out the Sprint Car Weekend in Central PA with 410s and 358s on Sunday. And in Ohio, Attica was scheduled to try again this week after having their opener last Friday night rained out, but we'll have to wait yet again to see the debut of the new 3-inch Sprint Car Wicker Bill, Wicker Bill rule there. Easy for me to say. Attica has sacked Friday and the rain date of Saturday. They will try again next week to start their 2024 season. Uh, out west, the NARC 410 season continues Saturday at Merced Speedway. Cole Macedo won the opener last weekend at Chico on a very difficult surface in a race that turned into a battle of attrition. Uh, if you want to see that last lap wreck uh, that Ryan Robinson had where he hit the, the backstretch wall, go check out Cali Dirt videos. He's got an insane angle of that. Uh, pretty wild stuff. Uh, the USAC CRA non-wing cars are racing as well, but not in California. They've got a Saturday show at Cocopa Speedway in Arizona. David Gasper is the championship leader there after two races. He earned his first career CRA win a week ago. As for other late model options, the only other five-figure paying race uh, this week is Saturday at Ultimate Motorsports Park here in North Carolina. If the weather plays nice, that one is expected to draw some names. Uh, guys like Garrett Smith and Chris Ferguson expected to attend. All right, that's it for the uh, daily show this week. Keep an eye out for the next day or two. Maybe we'll fire up a live stream again. It seems like you guys are in, kind of enjoying and digging those, so uh, maybe we'll do it again. Uh, make sure as well that you have your notifications on this YouTube channel turned on so you can be alerted when we go live. Uh, I'll also hit the uh, Dirt Tracker Facebook and Twitter accounts uh, with links uh, if, we, uh, if we end up doing that. I hope you guys have a great uh, Thursday and a great rest of your weekend out there. We'll see you right back here on Sunday.